Well, I think what we're going to do is we're going to start the uh, webinar tonight. We're running about five minutes late, and um, I just wanted to uh, say welcome and thank you tonight for showing up to our um, Encore webinar. Now, tonight for the webinar, um, we're basically... Everyone is in listen-only mode, so if you have any questions whatsoever, please raise your hand on the webinar, and um, someone from our team can um, uncheck your information, and you can ask a question. If you do also have a question and you want to submit it, then type in the question box below right here and you can um, submit the information there. Now, as I said, um, thank you for the webinar, or thank you for uh, coming out tonight. And I just wanted to introduce myself. My name is uh, John Booker, and I'm with uh, Peak Solar. And Peak Solar, we're an integration company that uh, we design and develop systems all around the country. And so, so again, thank you very much for tonight. Basically, um, what, what we are, as I said, we are large. Um, we have a large selection of qualified goods. Um, we do mostly photovoltaic systems all around the country. We have uh, five locations, and we have three distribution warehouses one in New Jersey, one in Dallas, and one in California. We have about 15 years in the sustainable industry. So the topics for this evening, um, what is solar energy? How does a photovoltaic system work? What is the payback? And how do I size my own system? These are the topics that we're going to discuss throughout the night. If you have any questions whatsoever, please feel free to ask me, and um, I'll be happy to help you out. The first question is, what is solar energy? And um, there's really two different forms of uh, solar energy. Um, basically, there is, uh, there's two common forms. The first one is photovoltaic which is basically uh, converting the light, sunlight, into electricity. The other form is thermal, which is using the um, solar radiation or the solar heat to be able to generate some type of power. So a photovoltaic would be, it may use something like solar panels, racking, inverters, may use those type of components. Whereas a thermal system could use a thermal collector, something similar to a solar panel, or a turbine, or a cooling tower. Um, a solar thermal would be like if you were going to use a, a solar hot water heater. That would be a thermal system. Whereas a photovoltaic system would hook right into the, um, right into the house, right into the breaker panel. And moving along, these are examples of photovoltaic systems. Um, as you can see, these are all roof mount systems. So um, how does a photovol photovoltaic system work? And um, in a nutshell, it all starts with the solar cell. The solar cell is the basic component The solar cell is the basic component uh, that generates and collects the energy from um, the sun. And um, once it gets the electrons, it basically it takes the electrons from the sun and then it's able to then take all the electrons for each of the cell and it's harnessed and it's basically it's put into a DC or direct current. Now, um, 
if you have a home or if you have a business, you need to use AC. So what we have to do is we have to convert it from DC over into AC. And we use an inverter. After the inverter, um, once we convert it, we can use it as power. It can go to the grid, it can go in a house, whatever we need. This is an example of the solar home. Um, as you can see right here with my cursor, the solar radiation or the solar light hits the solar panels on the roof. And all of the light um, within these solar cells are collected and they're brought out. And as you can see, there's a conversion from DC to AC right here. And um, the DC would be very similar to what you have in your car. AC is what you have in your home. And once you go the AC, it's able to go through your breaker panel and it's able to go into your home, say your television or a light. Now, through government regulation, it'll, it allows you to then, uh, if you have no need for energy, then you can actually uh, send the energy back onto the grid. So um, that is a... Uh, so right now, we don't need to have battery systems anymore. We can actually use the uh, grid as our battery source. Now, a lot of people ask um, me all the time is, what happens when the grid goes down? In the old days, the system would turn off because of uh, the electrical code. We had to basically have the solar system go down when the, um, when the electricity went out. However, SMA just came out with a new inverter that allows you, when the grid goes down, it allows you to get 1500 watts of AC. Now it's not a lot per inverter, but it does give you a, um, a significant amount for lights, a small refrigerator, some other components. So it does allow you to have that um, solution. Now even the microinverters, the microinverters like Enphase, um, if it goes out, then the system um, will go down. So this first one from SMA or Sunny Boy is something new. And I was just in uh, North, I was just in San Francisco last week um, reviewing this new inverter. Now the um, the next thing we're going to talk about is the type of models, and um, there are really two distinct type of modules that are the main ones in the industry. I'm going to skip to the bottom and, and say one little thing about thin film. Uh, thin film is a form of, um, of, of solar module that basically is very, uh, it's not very efficient. So it's, if you have your calculator, that's an example of a thin film. You need massive fields to be able to use a thin film. Now, in the industry, most of the time we use monocrystalline or polycrystalline solar cells. And I'm going to go into more detail. The, the top one, that is the monocrystalline uh, solar panel. And the bottom one is the polycrystalline solar panel. And um, the monocrystalline solar panels are usually higher efficiency. Um, they have what's called a pseudo-square. If you can look at my cursor right here, you can see that there's some white space between the cells. That's because some of the cells, it doesn't give you all of the area. So that's the actual back sheet of the solar panel. So it's not really a true square. There is, um, you have a greater area. Um, so for example, you on a specific surface area you have more watts per square foot and you can actually on a roof or something you have limited space you can actually put more watts there. The um, monocrystalline have about 10% more power than a polycrystalline. So if you have a 5,000 watt system in a polycrystalline you're going to have a 5.5 kW. And um, they're usually a higher cost. Uh, they're slightly higher. Um, as you can see, these are examples of a black-on-black -black up at the top module. 
Now, the other thing is, the other module is the polycrystalline. Um, the polycrystalline are the workhorse of the industry. Um, the reason I say that is because they're everywhere. Uh, Germany is the epicenter for solar in the world, and they use polycrystalline cells all the time. Now, the um, polycrystalline cells are square-like modules, and uh, they're usually a lower price. Now that we got through modules, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about inverters. And um, inverters are important because that's what we use today in the um, to change over the energy from DC over to AC. Now, as you can see, there are a couple different categories. Um, there are centralized inverters, and those are the oldest ones that have been out. They've been out for about 40 years now. And then the next type are the microinverters. The microinverters have been out for about 10 years now. So they're a newer technology. The last technology is called the power uh, optimizer. They're a hybrid type of um, system between a central and a microinverter. Now, this example is uh, a centralized inverter. As you can see over the right, that is a Sunny Boy, uh, SMA or Sunny Boy inverter. They've been around for over 40 years now. The SMA or Sunny Boy inverter, it's usually a low cost, uh, reliable product. Again, it's German ingenuity, it's been out there for a long time. Now, what are the downfalls for this type of inverter? Well, it does have shading tolerance. So if you do have some shading on your roof, what's going to happen is it will bring down the entire system. Now, there are massive megawatt fields that they use centralized inverters. So it's really good technology. It's time tested. The only thing is, is you got to make sure you don't have shade. Now, there is one solution that recently came up, and that's a, a dual MPPT. And what that means is that if you think of this inverter right here, think of it as two inverters inside of it. And so, for example, if you have one flat roof and you have another tilted roof, and you have tilted to the east or west, well, that will allow each one of the uh, systems to work independently. So you'll be able to produce the most amount of energy. The uh, next type of inverter is the microinverter. And these have come out uh, tremendously. They've been a big push in the industry, and it's been out for about seven years now. They're newer technology. Um, the first bullet point is, is they're easy to customize. In the old days, we would have systems where we might have 34, 37 panels on the roof. Customer wanted it for aesthetics, or they wanted it for specific need. Didn't work with the string sizing, with the centralized inverter. So sometimes we had to do multiple inverters. It got extremely costly. So what we now have are the microinverters. We have basically one inverter on the back of each panel. And as I said, they're easy to customize. You can design the system any way. It allows you to have different roofs, different peaks, um, if you want to do flat. However you want to do it, it allows each one of the micro, micro inverters to work independently. So each one of them are their own unit. They do have shade tolerance. So again, there's more technology behind it than the centralized one. And the real um, point that a lot of people like are the online monitoring system. And this online monitoring system will allow anybody uh, who has access to it to view the system anywhere in the world. So say you are in Timbuktu, you turn on your system, you can see what is going on with your system back home. Now that we talked about inverters, um, talk a little bit about the type of racking. And uh, there's really two important type of racking. 
Um, the first racking is a roof mount. And uh, roof mounts are either a deal with roll, rails or, or ballast. But a rail type of um, roof mount is similar to like train track rails. And these train track rails would have um, an L foot. If you think of an L, um, it would have the L foot. Uh, it would basically be connected to, to the top of the L foot would be the rails. On the bottom would be a lag bolt that would go directly into the roof. Now, you might have to use tile hooks. And what a tile hook is, this is a way to not penetrate like a Spanish tile or a barrel tile. The other type of roof mount are ballast systems. And a ballast system is something that's not penetrated. It has to have a zero degree or a flat roof. And they're usually common for um, commercial systems. Now, the other type of uh, racking that we use a lot is the ground mount. And they usually work with um, the poles and piping. There may be screws that go into the ground. So this is directly onto the ground. Now that we talked about the um, the modules, the racking, and the inverter. The racking and the inverters, there are some pretty well na good names in there, um, pretty established companies. Whereas the module manufacturers, there's a dime a dozen. And so customers can have a lot of problem finding which manufacturer they really want to go with. And so here's a couple tips uh, for picking a manufacturer. I recommend going with either a tier one or two tier two manufacturer. A tier one manufacturer is a brand or a native company. When you think of brands, you might think of Nike. I mean, that's a, or Microsoft. They're extremely well-known brands. Um, Sharp is an example of a well-known brand in the solar industry. Honda is another example of ones that have crossed over from the other parts of the industry. Now, Canadian Solar, that's also another well-known that is not as well-known in the United States, but it's well-known throughout the world. And Trina might be another example. Now, they also have, these companies have deeper pockets. They may be on the NASDAQ, New York Stock Exchange, Tokyo Stock Exchange, and they usually have a third party insurance. Now, a tier two manufacturer, this is usually a lower cost um, product. These are still A grade material, and I recommend between A grade and B grade, but make sure to go with A grade. And they also have a third party insurance. And the third party is very important with these companies because, again, if they were to go out of business, you would still have the opportunity to um, have the warranty in the future. Now, most of these modules today are built in either Korea, India, Taiwan, China, or the US. And a lot of people um, talk about the Chinese or Taiwanese panels. Um, I've been over to the manufacturers and they are extremely well built. They use all the state of the art technology and a lot of times it's never touched by a human. Why? Because the Germans are the ones that put a lot of money and time and energy into their factories. They built the industry so that they can get the most high efficiency product. And so the Chinese know that they have they can't just um, have one person working on each one of the cells. So it's really remarkable remarkable what they're doing. Um, in the U.S., we have Sharp that is an example of a, um, they manufacture in Tennessee. Now, the U.S. main man, uh, modules are about 20% more expensive than the um, foreign manufacturers. Now that we um, got through the solar, um, we're going to talk a little bit about the benefits of a solar system. And um, one of the major benefits is that it can dramatically reduce down your electric bill. 
If, say, you're in PG&E or Southern California Edison, you might be in tier number five and four, and what your ultimate goal is to get down to tier number one. Well, this solar system can definitely reduce down your electric to a more reasonable area. It's got a quick payback. Um, today's solar has an average of five years or less, and that's an industry standard. Um, the, the California Energy Commission um, has published recently. It's a secure investment. This product has been around for over 70 years. Uh, NASA has used it. People, um, Japan has used it for years. So the polycrystalline and the monocrystalline are well known in the industry. Solar actually will increase your property value. Um, like a pool, there is, these are the type of things that actually give the increase to the value of the product. For the social responsible person, it will reduce on your carbon footprint, and it's the social, social responsible thing to do. And the last thing is, it has to do with the um, reduce the dependence on the power plant. I deal with people every single day, and they tell me, you know what, I'm tired of being subject to my utility. Well, this solar system will allow you to uh, not be dependent on the, on the utility. Now, I do recommend using this symbiotic relationship with the utility company. Use them as your battery source. Um, legally, they have to do it. And in reality, they actually like to have you there. They're scared of you, they're scared of the solar system, but it actually, a solar system actually helps with demand um, within a specific area. Because during the day, it's producing the most amount of energy, and that's when you're usually not home. So it actually helps um, the utility out. But the utility never wants to tell you that. They're, they're just too scared of the solar. Now, this is an example of the financial incentive um, payback map. Now that we um, talked about the solar product and such, how do you pay for it? How do you get um, your money and your payback? Now, the first bullet point there is a government regulation called 1603. This is a tax credit that basically every person in the United States is allowed to take. And it's 30% tax credit. And you could either, if you have a, a corporation, you can pass it down from your corporation to your personal income. You could use it at your company. So it is a very important part to the payback system. Another uh, type of incentive that some states have is a state's credit. And um, for example, Hawaii has a 35% tax credit. North Carolina also has one. New York has a 25% tax credit. Now, in Georgia, they recently introduced a 35% tax credit. The next point is uh, a solar renewable energy credit. This is basically a mechanism that these governments have created to get enough green energy. These states have said to the utility that you have so much dirty energy and we want you to produce more clean energy. So the governments give them an option. They said, if you want to, you could either build the system or you could collect uh, these credits called SRECs. Well, the utility wants to take the easy route out, and so they will buy the credits from local consumers. And when they buy them, they will take it, and then they'll present it to the government. Now, why do the um, utilities want the SRECs? Well, they do not give enough SRECs then they're charged double what uh, the going rate for SREX are valued at. So it's pretty much um, in their interest to do it. The only problem with SREX is it's like a commodity. 
Um, it's like a it's with supply and demand. So if there is too much uh, demand out there, um, the price is going to fall out. The next uh, incentive is the utility rebate. Uh, the utility rebate happens in almost every state, but they go extremely quick. For example, FPL down in Florida, the rebate usually goes in three minutes. So it's one of those things that you can't count on certain areas. Now, if you're in Southern California Edison, there is still rebate, uh, 22 cents per watt to sell it there. The next one is uh, feed-in tariffs. A feed-in tariff is basically when you take your energy and you put it directly into the grid and you get paid for it. TVA and LIPA up in New York, so the Tennessee Valley Authority, and also LIPA, which is Long Island Power, have this incentive. So you could use it in these specific areas. And the last incentive is the high electric rate. If you're anywhere in California and you're in tier number five and number four, well, getting yourself out of those tiers is an exceptional way to uh, pay back the system extremely fast. Now, this is an example of a typical system that's done from a utility rebate and the 30% from the federal government. This is a 9.6 kW system, and it has 2.7 years payback. This is only the material, but um, with the system, an installer and everything, it's about a four-year payback for the system. This system actually has an internal rate of return of 38%, so it's a pretty good system. As you can see from the payback analysis, it's going into green after the couple of years. So, Now, one of the last points is how do I size my own system? And one of the things is, is to size your own system, what you need to do is you need to know what your electric bill is and why do you need to know that? Because you want to know what are your habits? What are you consuming right now? Um, we may look at your the size of your roof, but the electric bill is the really important area to be. Now, what we can do for you is if you want, um, if you want to give us, uh, if you want to send us an email, we with your electric bills, your email address, your phone number, and zip code, we can actually design a system. For your specific needs. Um, so if you're producing say 900 kilowatt hours a month, which is a normal system, we can design it up for you and just give you an estimate what the system would uh, be, what it would cost, and what type of payback analysis you would have. So we usually put together a 15 page report to show you exactly what incentives you would get. Now, the last thing is, is if you have any questions, um, please feel free to give me a call, call at 813-482-4871, or you can email me at jrboker at peaksolar.com. Now, if you're interested in sizing your own system, please feel free to email me at that location, and we can um, help size up that system for you. Now, I want to say thank you very much for tonight. And if you have any questions, I'm going to open up the floor for everybody and uh, see if you have any questions. So if you have any questions tonight, please let me know. Well, I see that a lot of people are quiet tonight, so I'd like to say thank you so very much again. Oh, there we go. Hi, John. Can you hear me? Hello, John. Can you hear me? Let me see if I can... John's having a little trouble tonight.
John, can you hear me? Hello, sir? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, the question I got, I just wanted to know, I wanted to get my dad to watch this. Uh, are you going to have another one of these online? Yeah. Yes, we're going to have another one of these um, on Sunday. We always have one on Sunday, and then we're probably going to have an encore on Tuesday nights. But um, this webinar will be uh, uh, recorded, and after the webinar, it, if we have no problems, it will be put onto YouTube and sent back out. So. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. And I will send you an email, uh, and I want to uh, get a system set up. Yeah, I mean, it's exactly what I need. So. That'd okay. Great. Well, thank it. you. Thank you very much for uh, coming to the webinar tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, everybody, for uh, showing up tonight. And, again, if you have any questions whatsoever, please feel free to email me or call me up. And also, I forgot to mention, if you're on PeakSolar.com, we have a chat box that uh, you can ask any questions uh, with a representative, one of our engineers, um, anytime. All right. Thank you very much. Have a great night.